Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at components in Zim. Ooh, that's like buttons and sliders and dials. Oh my. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And what we'll do is we'll go into the examples section and scroll on down in the examples. There is components. Clicking. So we'll click on components and we arrive here. So Zim components. We have a button and the button brings up a pane which is draggable if we so desire. And a checkbox. And the checkbox turns off and on the waiter. Normally this is a waiter. Uh, normally the waiter will you'll want to show that as stuff is loading and then when something loads you hide the waiter. So a waiter has a show and hide. Right now we're uh, doing the show and the hide based on the checkbox's value. We have radio buttons down here and the radio buttons are controlling a an indicator down below and indeed the indicator is also controlling the radio buttons. Indicators are not always interactive. Uh, sometimes they're quite small and you know underneath something and you don't really interact with them. They just indicate what section you're on, etc. Here we have a dial and as we change the dial that's operating a slider down below and vice versa. The slider can operate the dial. This is a, a stepper. In this case we're stepping numbers and stepper is causing the the tab to go and vice versa. The, oh, this isn't a tab, it's a pad. So that's a pad. This is a tab up here. We'll get to that. So that's the slider, the stepper. This stepper, by the way, can also step through words. So you can use that like a, a word menu as well. And you can uh, drag your, your cursor back and forth on it and use arrows and so forth. We talked about the waiter. Here is a window and the window uh, scrolls up and down like that or with the scroll bar if you turn that on. And we, oh, on this side in the right hand column here are the tabs at the top and the tabs are just adding a little bit of text down to that. That's a text area. Normally text areas you can type in hello, uh, like so. Uh, this is, by the way, a label component right here to show text, but you can't type in a label. So, but you can type in a, a, in a text area here. Um, uh, these guys are controlling that. All right, what else? Oh, a color picker. So uh, the color picker is changing the color of that rectangle in the background there. Now this is a very uh, reduced color picker. The color picker often has a um, you know, full range of colors. It's got a, a color indicator that shows you, you know, the number of the color that you picked. It's got grayscale things. It's got an OK. It's got a close. So um, color pickers are often a panel that pops up. And this one is um, a simplified version of that. You can also show colored circles. Here we've got the upload pick. I think that would be the last one. Yeah, let's upload a pick then like that. And uh, we've had the picture load into the window here. And uh, you can scroll that around uh, with the, the scroll bar as well. We, uh, uh. Um, and that's what a window is good for. If you can't uh, fit uh, something big onto a page, put it in a window. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have, when we loaded that picture and made it fit to the size of that window, but you know, whatever then. Why use a window? Just load a picture to a place. Okay, so that's a, a run through of the components. Why don't we take a look at uh, the docs to see where we can find information about these components and then we'll, we'll take a peek, we'll explore a bit of the code. Does that sound like fun? So we'll come back to the Zim site, click and into the docs. Now the docs are, um, you know, there's lots of docs. If we scroll down, docs, 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 docs. The components are all in the display module here. So we'll hit display or scroll down to display. It starts with container shape, bitmap sprite, movie clip. Those are all of our basic things that we can see uh, or ways to organize, that being the container. Then we've got circle, rectangle, triangle, squiggle, and blob. Those are our shapes. A uh, blob, by the way, really taking on any shape if you configure it uh, like that. Blob has rounded corners, but it also can have pointy corners, so they make polygons or hexagons or anything like that. 
Um, then we run into our components. Uh, button, checkbox, radio buttons. So here we are in here. Button, checkbox, radio buttons, pane, window, waiter, indicator, etc. Stepper. Oh yeah. So there they all are there. And what we do is we press on them, uh, buttons, and, and then we can see, hopefully that's uh, big enough for you, we can see all of the parameters for the buttons, things that we can change. Um, from the basics to unusual things like uh, uh, here we've got icons we can add icons to the buttons we can change backings of the buttons and we can use zimpizaz to bring in vector based things or you can make your own easily enough um, they all have you know roll backings roll icons that kind of thing we've also got weights and the weight but weights on a button are really neat that allows you to press a button and then show a you know a confirm like are you sure or a confirm and if you don't press that confirm within a certain time the button reverts back to the normal button so it's almost like having two buttons in one um, or it might be a loading thing so you press and it says uh, loading you know and then when it finishes loading uh, you know, off you go. We've got toggle states as well, so you can toggle a button and make a change to a different one, like a play and a pause, you know, that, that type of deal. This is a label, a label component, and up above we have the label component, and here are all the options of a label. So when you use a button, you get a default label, but if you want to configure that label, then you would pass in a Zim label, and you have all of these options for the label. And that's how, uh, to some degree, the components work, where, uh, for instance, the tabs here, tabs, um, under the tab section, you can put in a bunch of words and get tabs of those bunch of words. But if you want to customize how those words look, they're actually buttons. And so you can go in and um, adjust the buttons. And the buttons, remember, have labels, so you can adjust them there. So tabs are a bunch of buttons. And the pad is a bunch of tabs. So, um, neat, huh? All right, any of these you can open up and find out more about. So if we wanted to find out more about pain, for instance, we would open it up. There's a description. There's an example, another example. Here's a description of the parameters that you can change, blah, 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 blah. And the methods that you can use on that, toggle, show, hide, etc. Uh, and the various properties of the, of the pain and uh, the events that it has. It dispatches a closed event. Most of these, uh, as we'll see, will dispatch a change event. And that's when you know, you're changing a radio button or a slider, etc. All right, so that's the docs where you can find out more about these things. Let's uh, pop into the code when we're here in the Zim components. We'll view this locally, so open in a browser. And it basically gets what we were looking at uh, locally. So if we make any changes, we can see that. And we're just exploring this now, and it may be that in future explores, we can explore um, specific components. I, I bet there would be no problem exploring for 20 minutes a button, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. We can explore specific uh, components later, but we want to just get an overview of how they work. Uh, their classes, so each one is, has a capital letter to start, it's class, and we therefore make a new label by asking for a new label. Here we are putting in the, the text, uh, and we're then positioning this on the stage and setting its alpha down. So that's the label. Uh, here's a button. We've stored a button in a variable because later we want to do something with the button. We're going to click on the button to show the pane. So here's our button, and instead of passing in just parameters in order, which we could do, comma, 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 we are using the Zim Duo technique, and, and that's quite common when we're configuring components of a configuration object here, the squiggly brackets, and then we just put the parameter name and the property, parameter name, property, parameter, et cetera. It's nice to stack them like this. You don't have to. You could run them all on, on one line, but if you stack them, we could say, turn turn that off. Hey, we, we were saying set the corner to zero and that makes the button square. But if we turn that off, we'll end up with the button or the default corner. And if I refresh here, the default corner is like that. So you can get around that by default, the, the button is rounded like so. If you uh, wanted to see the gradient a little bit more, if we went with a 0.5 gradient, uh, that would be a much stronger gradient. 
there it is. So darker on the bottom and lighter on the top. I don't really like that all that much, so I like uh, a light gradient or even no gradient is fine. I also prefer square corners. So that's just some of the parameters that we put in there for the button. And remember, there were dozens of other parameters that we could use there. We have a click event. We're showing the pane. Here's, um, here's the pane. And you can add content to the pane. You can just say, um, you know, if you made a circle and wanted to add it to this, the pane, you would go new circle. And you could specify information about the circle, but we won't do anything. Dot add to pane, like so. And let's see what would happen when we uh, refresh this. We press the button, and there's the circle added to the pane. Uh, by the way, um, the registration point of the pane is in the middle, because quite often you're wanting this just for an alert or something, so we could easily add some text to that by just asking for a label, add it to the pane, and we'd have, you know, a, an alert box or something like that. Here's a checkbox. We're putting a label of check on it, and we're starting it checked true. We're positioning it on the stage, and here's our change event. So that when the checkbox changes, if the checkbox is checked, then show the waiter. Uh, else, hide the waiter. So that's what's allowing us to hide and show the waiter there. It's, uh, there it is showing. There it is hidden. So every time the checkbox changes, it's hiding and showing the waiter. The radio buttons are here. Uh, we've given it a list of things to say and positioned it on the stage. We've set its selected index to 1. Now, a selected index of 0 is the first one. So if we said 0 like that, then the first one would be checked or selected. But that now no longer matches uh, over here because what we were doing is sort of making it so that these match as they go along. So we wanted them started. In our, in our case, we, we started both of them at one, but that's just us goofing around there. And when the radio button changes, we set the indicators selected index to the radio buttons selected index. Now, uh, we can also get the value of the radio button. So, you know, what would be in there? I think that's either radio.text or radio.current value. I'm not sure which one we'd have to look at the, the docs on that. Here's the indicator. We said that we can press on it. That by default is turned off. Generally, we don't use an indicator to press on. We say how many indicator things there are, and then we use the selected index. So if you were in a game and mapping levels or something like that, any level you arrive at, you would say, hey, indicator.selected index equals level. And then, you know, your indicator would indicate the rate level. We're doing basically the same thing as we did with the radio button. When the indicator changes, we set the, the radio's selected index to the indicator's selected index. In our second column, we have a dial. We just gave that a color, positioned it on the stage, and basically doing the same thing with dials and sliders. You would go with the current value of the dial or the slider. There's all sorts of things that we can set on a dial and a slider, like mins and maxes, and uh, whether we're using the ticks. Uh, so the dial has an indicator, uh, types of indicators we can set. Here's the stepper, same kind of deal. We're setting the pad selected index to the, the stepper selected index. Uh, here's a slider, same as the dial pretty well. So when it changes, we're just setting the dial's current value. There's that waiter, and we showed that right away. And here's our window. Uh, we set the indicator, we set the indicator, the indicator is the scroll bar sort of thing. Uh, this was set up to be primarily a mobile window where you're just swiping the, the content of the window in there. Um, we added uh, the mobile type indicator, that is just a little scroll bar that appears at the side as you're swiping. But then we sort of, well, said, oh, okay, maybe when it's a window, people are used to having their scroll bars there, so we brought those in to be draggable and so forth. But still, uh, it's uh, default set to not draggable, so you have to go in there and set it to drag. We're adding some content. We added a label to the window and just put it on different lines to help uh, show that we could scroll that. In column three, we put a, just a backing rectangle 
uh, in place and put the tabs on that. Uh, tabs would often go across the top. Did we round the corners on the tabs? Yeah, we rounded the corners on the tabs. They don't have to. And if you don't have rounded corners on the tabs like that, let's take a look. It starts to look like a button bar, which is also very handy. These could have full words on them. You can set the spacing on them, and then you can basically get a bar of buttons that might go across the, the bottom of your your app. Type of thing. We'll go back to the rounded corners there. And when the tabs change, we're adjusting the text of the text area. Our pad, when we change the pad, we're so changing the stepper. Here's the color picker. Now the color picker, as mentioned, is a really reduced one and it almost takes work to reduce. We say, hey, don't, don't have a gray picker, don't have an alpha picker, don't have a button bar, and please only use these colors. If you want to see what a color picker looks like um, without all that stuff, and tell you what, why don't we not move it? We'll just have it start off right in the center. I hope nothing's over top of it, but there might be. That's the main color picker, and it's a, a color picker that you can drag around. And the idea is you pick a color uh, of something and you hit OK. There's nothing attached. Uh, well, I guess the OK does do the change. Uh, there's no close on it at the moment, so you would close it when you hit OK or the or, or the X, etc. So this would just be a pop-up thing where you would add the color picker when somebody wants to pick a color, because obviously that's a fair bit of real estate there. But uh, popping on back, let's turn it back into a smaller color picker. And we're setting the backing color of the rectangle to whatever the selected color is. That's what that value is. Here's a loader. We're putting it on the stage. And when the loader loads, so when it, the picture is in, we can find out what the picture is by asking for the event objects bitmap property. You can also ask for the event objects dot bitmaps plural property, and that allows for multiple image loading as well. And you can just loop through all of the, the bitmaps that have been loaded and handle each one independently. We're removing the con contents children, and we're adding the pick and updating. We can also scale to the window, for instance. So if we bring, bring that in, let's just see what that uh, looks like. We refresh here. We upload a picture. And now that picture is scaled to the window. And we could also position it right now. It's not centered exactly, but uh, you see that we've scaled it with a little bit of room in there, 90% of the window, either the width or height, depending. But that's not what we did. And here's the text area. And uh, text area, by the way, is an HTML text area that's been put on top of the canvas and managed that way. Sometimes that can be a bit tricky um, to deal with. Uh, but anyway, the uh, text area is in there, and it has things like placeholder. You know, so we could we could do a placeholder as well. So if we don't add any text, we could have comma placeholder colon um, quote type here, you know, that, that type of thing. And we refresh here like so. And that should have been in there. Placeholder probably all lowercase because uh, it's an HTML parameter. Refresh type here. And as we type, that placeholder goes away. Delete and then it, it comes back again. The canvas has no way to enter, I'd like to type stuff, so an input field, so we borrowed from the HTML and, and, and put that on there so that it scales with it and, and so forth, uh, you know, which is kind of tricky to do all that. Same with the loader. The loader also is borrowed from HTML, traditional HTML, to upload a picture. And you can scale that how you want, set colors of it and borders and text that it will say and all that kind of stuff as well. Hey, isn't this neat? Do you like it? These are the, uh, these are the components in Zim and we've been talking about them in this Zim Explorer. So please join us for more Explorers. Take a look at the last Explorers. Uh, come on out to Zim.js. Start coding with these components. It's, it's amazing to make apps and things with that. I'm Dr. Abstract, have a great day.